we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique House. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not, not even my day. We're all gone. But y'all don't, y'all stop what you're doing, first of all. Go ahead, like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms, everything including Patreon, because Patreon is where you're going to see our full length interviews after a while. And let me tell you, on our YouTube membership, that's where you're going to see it as well. So y'all don't forget, like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. Thank you very much in advance. Hey, man, listen, man, we got some guys here today, y'all. They done pulled up on me. I didn't even expect this to be going down like this, man. Well, you know, we scheduled it now. Don't trip. But I'm just saying, I didn't know if it would happen, man. Because, you know, people tell you stuff sometimes. And you be like, man, I sure can't wait to see this happen if it's going to happen. And, man, it just, hey, the bird just landed. You mm-hmm. hear me? Mm-hmm. Um, man, listen, man. I got two esteemed gentlemen on here, man, from Waco, Texas, man. Um, these guys right here, man, they go way back like four flats. Mm-hmm. <laughs> these boys right here is uh, uh, just a, they got an extraordinary story that they're sharing with us today, man. I got my boy David Hudson and Charles Johnson in the building, man. What up, guys? Welcome what's to Boss up, Talk 101. What's, what's going on? What's up, Boss Talk? What's man, up? you don't watch no Boss Talk, man. I'm coming like you just really watch it watching. All the time, <laughs> <laughs> the time. Man, how, how we doing? Good, good. Highly blessed. Man, highly thing. blessed. Highly yeah, blessed. yeah, yeah. Um, so, man, you know, you guys got an extraordinary story, and I don't know if y'all ever even told it. You know, have y'all ever been on a panel together before? No. Nah, but at, thank time. y'all, thank you guys, man. So, um, you guys grew up together. Um, man, Waco is different. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Don't get mad at him. I used to call it Waco <laughs> after that stuff happened down there with that crazy guy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> y'all remember that, right? Oh, yeah. That's why y'all yeah. built y'all reputation up at. <laughs> yeah. Right? That, that's when it really went down, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, you don't even remember. You wasn't even in the States. You from another country. <laughs> Let me go. I shouldn't even I put you on I heard the story. It. Okay. And then, lately, y'all got a little jiggy with some bikers down there. Mm-hmm. I, I seen that. I say, ooh, who them boys down there turn up? Do they know where they at? He can go crazy down there. So, first of all, man, like, 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 how is it, like, how was it growing up in, in, in Waco together? Was how was the the temperature like like growing up as kids in in east texas i'm from east texas you guys out of waco it's small down there the way kind of like I, I i've lived in waco before you know over the summer and stuff like that but just how was it for as you know during the during the early 90s you know what i mean mm-hmm. even the 80s you know what i mean going up into the 90s how was it there oh, it was it was just like it was in any other city or any other ghetto, any other place. You know, it was just a small environment. So, you know, you moved around and you did pretty much the same things, but it was the same things going on. This um, this country has been manipulated all the way around the board. And Waco ain't no different than New York or California. Just smaller. That's it. Same stuff going on. Same cone, same block, same things being sold, same wrong, same bad, same good, same good. You know, it's just the same thing. It's just we was we we were all like the guys that we knew back then. We were younger. A lot of us we grew up bumping heads, and now we most of them we all cool. It ain't no problems now. It's easy to get over because we like we say we all in one area. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't got to keep a problem going on, but we got to see each other. We mm. got to, which is crazy. You know? Like. He being nice with me bumping bump heads. <laughs> like, it's deep. Like, for real, for real. It, yeah. it trips me out sometimes. Like, dang, time is something else. Wow. Some of the people that you've seen, I know when, when I was young, you know, people get shot. You know, it was easy to get. You could shoot a person and kind of get away with it back in the day. Yeah. I'm being real. <laughs> like, like, like you shoot a dick. My uncle told me the story where he uh, shot a dude, and he had gotten hurt a little bit in the fight. They end up at the same hospital. Neither one of them was arrested, kind of, but you know, but it, this is the kind of stuff that happened in the eighties and nineties. Neither one of them told on each other, did? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like it, it was a different, time. different, different world. You know, they lived in. We knew somebody was going to either get shot or killed on the weekend 
down there in the country where I'm from. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they were, it was, they were it, was, it, was, it was a juke joint down there called the Chuck Wagon. Shout out to the Chuck Wagon, Lil Man, <laughs> uh, all them other cats down there. All yeah, my uh, matter of fact, my uh, one of the guys killed his brother there. I never forget it. It's stuff like that. I can keep going. I got stories. he killed his own brother. Yeah, yeah, he killed his brother, but he said he didn't do it. But we know he did it. You know what I'm saying? So this is the kind of stuff, and they gonna know when they see it, like, dang, E, I know exactly who that nigga talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my daddy got shot in the head. I tell that story all the time. The same uh, juke joint that my uncle got shot in the back of the head. Only different, my daddy lived. This right. is the this is when I came to Dallas. I was like, man, they took me to South Dallas. I'm like, this is just like where I'm from. I'm really just bigger, but it's the yeah, same, same thing. thing. So yeah. I agree with you on that statement yeah. that you said earlier. Same thing. Same old two step. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. So you guys though. Um, Coming up, y'all went to high school together. That's and right. junior high. And junior high. That's right. Who who was the fastest? That nigga could run, cause that nigga <laughs> quick on his feet, <laughs> man. Facts. That nigga, would you run that ball? Full back. I wasn't running back. Was that nigga back. wasn't no Daryl Johnston though. <laughs> 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 so I mean, did you play? You played high school ball. I played streets in high school. Oh, you just run, you hustling back then. Ain't yeah, because of the time, yeah. you know, yeah. the crack era came in. Yeah. Let's be real. We got his. That, yeah. People don't really like talk about that. That was a time. Like now, we got the fentanyl area. Yeah, I mean, the area is fentanyl, and uh, they say it's marijuana and all this other stuff. But really, fentanyl is the banger right now. Yeah. You had because heroin. marijuana you, you, not killing nobody. Well, but I'm just saying. Uh -oh. I'm just saying what's the most popular uh, drug that's the most potent during okay. this day and time. Yeah, you know what I'm talking. Yeah, about? and right. the people are latching on to it. Uh, you had also at one time you had an anthrax era. Yeah, y'all ain't ready for me. I'm watching the eras of yeah. what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, you so, so, so you had these eras. Well, it was first heroin, heroin. Then it came uh, 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 crack. They even had a, a cocaine era where they were snorting a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was real popular for one set. Every era had a little situation where that drug took over that era, right? right. But right. our era was crack. Crack era. Mm -hmm. Right, you we you know you get it, you whip it up, blow it up. You thought you was the man. That's what we done when when we was young and didn't know no better. I can't speak for y'all. I'm just telling you what I went through. Okay, that's right. But as we done this, families was torn apart. We didn't, and we we're quick to say today like we wasn't the cause of it. Man, them young folk crazy. I be like these niggas is crack babies. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the old, you know, the ones that just around thirty and under. That's right. Right? So, you guys, and how was the crack era in, and I'm gonna break it all the way down, in Waco? It was, Lit. like I said, the <laughs> same. We on 35. <laughs> we on our 35, so you know, they say Waco is the heart of Texas. So you gotta come through there if you're on 35. Ain't no way, ain't no way you can get around it. You can venture out, you gonna come through Waco though if you're on 35. So you know, a lot of things came through there, a lot of things didn't make it out. Some things stay, some things left. That's 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 the, how the streets move. But you write the crack. I believe at this point, until we see otherwise, I believe our era got hit the hardest. It was because you could do it and sustain. Yeah. You and it was an ugly sustaining. Mm -hmm. You you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Meaning, old girl that used to be fine. Now she a crackhead. And she just turned a crackhead, so she still look cute to me. <laughs> y'all don't know nothing about that. Yeah, yeah, this was a time. Y'all, it, it's a place right there where she was. Drug team, you never would have yeah. thought she'd have got on it. Yeah. And do you know what she's doing in the back of these buildings? Yeah. You See, right. you, you, this happened. It was not just one, it was. But every not everybody was taking this stuff. The ones who you least expect to take it. You like, damn, she on it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Am I right? A lot of people were. It was a lot of people affected by that. And and the one that got affected by it, you didn't expect that, that it would have got them. A lot of surprises. That's what Am you I said. right? No. Think about some surprises. of these people I'm thinking about. Yeah. It was a lot of surprises. You remember when they said that used to be the prom queen. Now she not, what? Not the prom queen. queen. The crack queen. Yeah. yeah. It happened. And that was in New York. But it was happening it in was Texas. Happening it was happening everywhere. It was happening everywhere. The drugs, the government, they, they pushed them drugs hard. That, that was a big thing. You got almost so, said well, it. Yeah. Was, the so, government, they pushed them hard. The they pushed, pushed them hard. So a person that um, never taken drugs or any of that, what what was it so hard to say no? Why was it so hard? 
it's, 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 it's a, it was a drug like any other drug, either you were selling it or you was using it. Because it two. was a thing of the time. It's like it's like wearing clothes now. If you pay attention, everything is, is pushed on the people. And that was, drugs was just one of them. Now it's a different drug being pushed on the people. It's always gonna be something though. They are gonna come up with something. I, since I've been out, I was wondering. I say, do people even still using crack or selling crack? It's a few, mm-hmm. of them. and they say, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And it's like, a few. And I'm like, for real? I thought it was a thing of the past, mm-hmm. you know. But it's still hanging around, like heroin and T's and Lou's did in the early '70s and '80s. That's still hanging around. But too. it surprised you when you see somebody buy or come up and get it. And you're like, damn. Yeah. That was still going on. <laughs> and it'd be some of the ones. Me coming from the game, I knew certain people. Like, damn, she still. How she make it this long? That's what was dangerous about it. Yeah. Was that you made it? You could you could make it a long ways on it, and even not get locked up. Sometimes you could just be doing it and going home doing it, and have about three, four people in the house with you. Meth was like, like that it, when like you first came. It was. Meth. I see. It had an era too. It was like when you were talking about cocaine. They say. Uh, Entertainers, athletes, it, it was almost like a designer drug at first. And then it kind of morphed into trickling down into the streets. And then, of course, in the poor neighborhood, then you cooking up crack. Well, when crystal meth first kind of came to the forefront, actually, it wasn't even at the forefront yet. I know this for a fact. It was doctors, dentists, professionals who was on it, and they said it made them focus. Hmm. And they was up three or four days. Yeah. yeah. And then subsequent to that, then, you know, the physical they, stuff. Yeah, they out. start looking like they their face was swollen. Right. They got little speck spots in their face. Right. I seen one of them yesterday. Then, then yeah. Then it started being visible. I just run into one. Then, I'm, I ain't going to say no name. My partner probably remember. Back in the day day, when we was com- coming up, this cat, the professional, House, cars, everything. He told us he hit it one time and couldn't stop. Let me yeah, let me tell you something. My partner told me because I was you know I was hustling back in the days. My partner told me he say, I said, man, what it feel like? <laughs> 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 we in the crack. He said, man, it's like. We was living in the woods, you know, there's trees around. He's like, it's like a, it's like when you hit it, like that leaf right there could fall off that tree and when it hit, in your mind, it go boom. I said, what? God. I don't want nothing. <laughs> I don't want to have nothing to do with that. <laughs> I want to get into you guys' story, man. Like, last time you was on here, you told a story somewhat, mm-hmm. but he wasn't here. Right. I don't think he had even been released yet. Mm-hmm. Or if he if he had, he had just gotten out. I just got out. What? I want to talk about that night, cause this thing was crazy. You end up going to prison. How long were you in prison? Twenty three years. I told people twenty four. Might as well might say twenty four. Well Sum it up. Might no. well <laughs> been. I was. I was in the. I always tell people I was in the twenty three winners, twenty two summers. Wow. Twenty three so, winners, twenty two summers. What? I went in October. Got out in October. Okay. What happened? To cause you to even have a run in with the laws. I know it was one night y'all was, was y'all leaving a football game? Was y'all just out? We, one of our partners had passed away and it was his birthday. That's right. And we was all together celebrating his birthday and really on the way home. So what really happened was the police actually profiled us hmm. and tried to pull us over for an illegal reason. In okay. Country. Yeah. And so when <clears throat> they didn't try, they did, right? They, they tried because we ain't stop. <laughs> oh, y'all <laughs> yeah. They tried. Yeah. We stopped when we got ready. That's right. Okay. So where did you guys, y'all end up, they, they chased y'all? Absolutely. Yeah. Where did you guys stop? Down the street from my sister. Down the street from my sister. Had. Was it because of safety or was it because y'all was wrong or was it? No. Nah, why why did we stop there? What you mean wrong? Yeah, why y'all didn't stop? What you mean wrong? Like what? In the wrong, or because they turn the lights on, like I woke up every day wrong back then. I get it, I did too. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying, wrong. when when they when them when them lights turn on, y'all were trying to get away from them. Yeah, yeah. So what happened was my, my partner he was asleep. Oh, he was asleep. He was in the back seat asleep. <laughs> and one of our other partners was with us. So when they when they lit us up, I pulled over. At first, I pulled over and stopped, and it just started raining. And then when I pulled Heart? it over, 
Yeah, it was. I'm talking about just yeah. storming. Mm. When I pulled over, because um, it, it wasn't either one of our, our cars or whatever vehicles. Anyway, when I pulled over, he woke up. Like, man, what we stopped for? I was like, man, it's the police behind us. But I didn't you know I had a license. And he was like, man, don't stop. <laughs> okay. Don't stop. <laughs> So, and y'all was, what, 17, 18? 17. 17. 17. Say, don't stop. So, why did you say don't stop? I was sitting back there dirty. Got okay. A, got a tech back there. Yeah, you, you got cocaine. You don't, need, you don't need this. this, this I can't, we can't stop right here. And you didn't know that he had all this I stuff? I yeah. oh, okay. can't stop right here. I got to get, you got to get at least get somewhere where you can get away. I can't yeah, stop yeah, right here. Too, I, ain't, I ain't got everything on me. I, I got to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't stop. So right when y'all, when you, when you do end up stopping at up from your sister's mm -hmm. house, what ends up? Did y'all when when just break it down to me? We so we, we stop. We're still on the on thirty five, <laughs> like a little exit, and after that, it's we gone. So was it a high speed chase, or were you like driving slow, or? Was it like a whole bunch of cops behind you? It was a whole bunch of cops, but it wasn't high speed. We was in the lack. Just drive. <laughs> yeah, this it, it kind of hazards on. It kind of uh, <laughs> on the cool. It kind of it to to understand it fully. It kind of breeds the arrogance. It say the arrogance that we had grown to. Like well, we, we gonna come. get away. That's next. Time. We ain't worried about. It. We gonna get away. That's how I start thinking. Like we gonna get away. We in South Waco. Where we from? We gonna get away. Just get somewhere where we know we at. We ain't mm -hmm. worried about the law. It just didn't turn out that way that night. That's wow. All. And and so you guys, do you get out the car when y'all stop, or do you just jump out? Of Everybody, it's real. Everybody jump out. Everybody jump out running. Mm -hmm. Everybody run. It's a rule. Everybody run. So when y'all running, you end up getting shot. Yeah. In the back, in the front, from the back. So I got shot from the front one time. So they shot you multiple times. Three how times. they shoot you from? If you running, how did they shoot you from the front? Because it was police. Every it was. Up. So you are running towards the police? No, when we stopped. What we what we do? What we, what we wasn't thinking that was that on the way. It's two o'clock in the morning, in Waco, Texas. On a Thursday night, I think it was. Ain't nothing happening. It was a Wednesday, I believe. Ain't nothing happening. So they calling police. They coming from everywhere. And they you get there quick. Saying? So by the time we got right there, it's six, seven laws on the scene by the time we stopped. But we ain't worried about it still. We think we just gonna get away. Like I always, we always get away. We never get caught, like literally. Like I'm telling you straight across the board truth, we never got caught, we always got away. Mm -hmm. But not this night. Wow. So when we take out running, we ain't thinking about they, they there. So when we take out running, I take out, they take out. The one law that's behind us, he chased me. It's, it's ironic that in court he testified and said that he jumped out and left his car in neutral. That's how I ended up going to prison for 23 years. Huh? Because like he said, I was fast. He wouldn't have caught me. He, I still be running. That's my joke. I said, I still be running right now. That's what I always tell you. If he wouldn't have got, left his car in neutral and had to jump back in it to, stay, to stop it from rolling, I would still be running right now. He would have never caught me. But he jumped back in his car, and that made him go on the street in his car, and he cornered me oh. on accident. Accident. Oh, Got accident. You. It was meant, in other words. And when he called me, when he yes. called you, he just came. When out. he when he called me, he jumped out and he football tapped him. Oh, it became and, an automatic. It, it became action. It was action from that point on. And at that time, you had already gotten shot. No, oh, ain't, they, ain't no gunshots yet. Oh, ain't no gunshots yet. It's so, just him tackling me. Once he tackled me, we rolled. He hit me so hard, my glasses came off, my beeper came off. All these things was off my body. People, glasses, hat, everything, because I wore a hat all the time then, too. I was just me, clothes, and then we went to wrestling with me. That when he felt the gun. I got the tech on me. Oh. Like always. I got it in my pants, clip in my pocket. I got everything on me, because I ain't going to lose it. That was my mind state then. I could just bought another gun, but I'm thinking, I ain't going to lose this one, though. You 17, man. Yeah, you, know, you know what I'm saying? I'm young. I ain't going to lose this one. Ain't no telling what might happen tomorrow if I lose this one. I need this one. So that's how I'm thinking. So when he tackled me, and by the time he feel it, David them running that way. I'm running this way by myself. Kind of to explain to you best, I always try to protect them. So I'm trying to run away from them because I know I'm the dirtiest one in the car. Yeah. I know this for a fact. They might be dirty, but I know they ain't dirty than me. So I need to get away from them. So I'm running one way, they run another way. They happen to catch them. So he hollering for the law. Roger, Roger, he got a gun. That when I realized, I know I had the gun, but now I realize it, it's, it's on now because he know I got it. 
because he felt it. Wow. He wrestling with me. He felt it. He, Roger, he got a gun. He panicked. I don't know that time. He, he was a rookie police officer. This was he, his first big, big, this was his first big shot. Wow. And so he, he had been on for six months. So he shot you. You didn't even pull for your gun. At all. At all. At but all. he they, shot court you. Court records say different. Court records say that I pulled it out, but the gunpowder residue, the, if he was There's my nothing lawyer, on your hands. If he was my lawyer then, I would never went to prison. With a while. Because the lawyer just let him run me over. He yeah. let him run me over. He, he fed me to him because of my record. I had a whole bunch of cases, and they, I had just been in the newspaper like a week before that. He was a court-appointed like, lawyer? He was court-appointed, but he a known lawyer. His name Russ Hunt Jr. He a known lawyer. In White, White, black? Caucasian. Okay. And he, um, he, um, he just fed me to the wolves. Mm. Cause he was caught upon. I had another lawyer by the name of Michael. What's his name? Michael Goins. Goins. His name Goins. He, I think he went on to be a uh, federal prosecutor. But he was always fighting hard for people in Waco. Hunt was too. That's why when I got him, when Goins got out of my case, cause he took the case as a federal prosecutor, I was okay with it. But he fed me to him because mm. he he beat some other cases and he was lying on me in the end, telling people, well, he got the time. Cause everybody was like, man, why y'all get that time? He ain't did nothing. He like, man, he got time. He was mugging the jurors. Just telling a lie. That's how I knew that he fed me to the people. And now that David allowed you, he can explain some of the ends now to me. We know he fed me to the people. Wow. We know he did. You know but, what I'm but you guys was gone that night, so there was no reason. To, what did what did you see in the case why you feel like he shouldn't have lost that case? He got charged with attempted capital murder on a police officer. A tech nine with a clip that hold 30... 36 rounds. It's one bullet that didn't even get ejected, spent. You don't, you don't do that. You understand? Like, we partners, I know. You understand what I'm saying? You don't you don't have access to 30 rounds in one bullet that gets jammed. In the, you, that means you're not shooting at nobody. Uh -huh. You understand what I'm saying? And it's the police. So if you did, you know you got to make a count. You got to make a count. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and on top of that, I've seen it. Like, the only, this is what happened. When the police officer is tugging. Oh, you've seen the, him wrestle? Yeah, exactly. Because by this time. The whole I'm, thing. That's what I, I was wondering. Because he's running far. He's running they far from, to how far from each car. other were you? They, oh, they so you was a witness. Oh, yeah. so he was, oh, okay. okay they okay, caught okay. him first. Right. When they caught you, they walking you back to the car and you see them struggle. Exactly. Yeah. They had on the How far right. were you from him? About as far as probably. Where the restroom is. Okay. 20 feet so, at the moment. You can you know, see it. I can see it clear as day. So I'm hearing them tell the police, man, I got, he, he's like this though. I got a pistol. And the police is behind him know. tugging at it. And he goes, bow. And he says, I'm hit. I'm hit. This is what the police yells. Well, it's by this time, it's probably 15 plus police cars in the area. So when he says he hits, now by this time, the gun is on the ground. And then my partner takes out running, and they lit up the blood. Like they I thought he was. I thought they had smoked him. They shot at me. They say twenty eight times, but only two. A, a old lady scratch. saved me. A old lady. I ran in her yard. I, I go by her all the time because I now now after all them years, I got a contract with my cleaning company to a restaurant right there by where this happened. At. I run it, so I got to ride by her every, every night. Every time. Every night I got to ride by her, and I'm looking. And you think everything about changed, it. like that event changed everything right there. Like it's businesses right there. The mm -hmm. people moved, they shut their houses down, and it's the house that I ran to. The lady, she came out yelling, "Y'all gonna kill him? Y'all gonna kill him?" Because they were shooting. Like if her her, her yard is on the side of the house, so I'm on the side of the house. That's why they were shooting into her house directly. They shooting into the side of the house, but she came out the front door and was yelling, "Y'all gonna kill him? Y'all gonna kill him?" They just shooting. They shot at me. They they got they got on paper in court. They said they shot twenty eight times. They shot we think more at you twenty eight times. We think more. But they say twenty eight. Running away from the scene with no weapon. He know I got the, the gun already fell he out. He got it it's on the ground. He got it. He secured it and put it by his car. He said that in court. He secured my pistol and put it by his car. Oh, I still have the clip. Oh, That's they it. said that. He said that in court. And they they still continued to fire after that fact. He still he he was a main one shoot transcript. You can pull it. Yeah. I would thing, think that they would have messed up the transcript to make it seem look a certain way, but that already looked weird. The only officer that that to this day, his name Firestone, and I, I got I got love for him because he just told the truth. He said, "Man, the only why I shot." He's what he said, "Cause the only why I shot because you wouldn't raise your hands 
but I didn't hear him. I'm, I'm, my drilling running now. I didn't hear him. He said he was right in front of me. He shot me in the front of the leg. He the only one that oh, shot that's the, the one front. I got the front bullet. He said, you wouldn't raise your hands. I didn't know if you had none. So I didn't want to kill you. I shot you in your leg. Mm -hmm. The other guy said he thought he was killing me, though. The other mm. police, Donahoe. He said, I thought I was killing him. I was doing panic fire that they taught me in the military. The one who shot you in the back? Yeah. Where, he shot me twice in, what, my, in, in your my leg, lower extremity. Only okay. reason why that happened was because the yard I ran in is is up. So while he on the ground shooting, he think he shoot me in my back, but I done ran up a hill like, so mm. now I'm up higher. So his bullets that went in my leg, he thought they were going to my back. He thought he was hitting me. He really did. You well, lucky you can even walk. Yes, that's true. I had a lot of long. So where'd you get hit? You hit, got hit right up under my buttocks and then my thigh in the back and then in my thigh in the front. Wow, so they didn't even hit you up top? No, not at all, by the grace of God. What did they What did, did they call you on the witness saying? Number first. What number did, one. No, what, no, did no. what did they What did they ask you, and, and what do you feel like, what were they trying to accomplish when they was Man, questioning you? This is what's crazy, is what happened before the witness stand. So the prosecutor at the time, the prosecutors at the time, before the trial, they called me in. Like I said, it's three of us. So before the trial, they called me in playing them games when you know this this is what we know what happened blah 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 so i'm like okay well since y'all know what happened you on okay i ain't see y'all there but if y'all know what happened it is what it is you know what i'm saying so then it's well i believe so i'm like nah this is what really happened so then they hit me with son do you know what perjury is i was like nah i don't know what perjury is and they say well it can get you however whatever the sentence was and i'm like so what are you talking about he, he we Get don't aggressive. want you. Getting aggressive. Johnson is who I'm who we're after. If you keep covering for him, blah, 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 blah. So once again, like I said, I'm 17 at the time. This what is he trying to say that you're covering for him? Because you're just telling the truth? Because I'm telling the truth. You got to think about it. That means if he walks, then there's a silver suit coming. Mm -hmm. Big time. Because mm -hmm. y'all right. shot this man. You see what I'm saying? So it's all that other stuff that's going behind the scenes. So they're trying to paint a picture. So anyways, I'm like, listen, man, I don't know what no perjury is, but whatever it is, hurry up. Let's go and run it so I can go and get back out of here or whatever, whatever you're talking about. I don't, if, if I'm, it's going to be some lying, I'm going to be lying to help him. Yeah, exactly. That's just how I go. Yeah. So it is what it is. So then I go out go out the office. And they call me back. Um, we, we apologize. We got you confused with Mr. Such and Such, who was our other, you know, our partner, which is, is bull crap. So anyways... So I was trying to call his lawyer because I'm, I'm on bond. Because at first, I was charged with the same thing initially. Wow. Why would they yeah. charge you with that when you wasn't even? We were in the car. You was in the car. Waco, Texas. And they can do that. They, no. They, well, they, it, it changed. But They're that's how it started. To. Yeah. So when you get shot, they take you to the hospital. You come, you, then they put you in jail. Once you're in jail, we're gonna fast forward to court, like or like we're gonna get on up to the court time. Um oh, did they did they give you some offers? They offered um they initially didn't offer anything. Then they came back and offered twenty. Cause I stayed in court I stayed in jail like eighteen months, I believe it was. Wow. They offered twenty years and then like right before right before I went to trial, they came and offered like ten. But by then I was like I knew I hadn't done nothing and my mind stayed back then like it it trip you out like I, I raised a lot of youngsters. We I was young, you know what I'm saying. But like I was really raising them. Like one of our partner just went to prison here recently, and he was saying the words that I was saying back then. Now, he he'd been in prison two three times. He just was trying to get me get Dave to take him in the court day. Like man, they gonna hang him. I ain't going to watch no hanging. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm he's saying the same things to me that I was saying then. I say cut it. I was dumb back then. I thought I knew a lot. I ain't know nothing. The people gonna smoke you. He said, cut it, we from South Waco, we fight. I was saying that back then. <laughs> they gave him life. And I'm like, and they, they gave, gave him life. life. Wow. They hooked him up. They hooked him up. And I was telling him, I said, man, David, know what's going on. Listen to him. He said, cut it. You said we fight. We from South Waco. I ain't, I'm going to fight. He went on in front and of David go fight with me. I said, man, he not going to go in there. He know you're going to get smoked. He, and he had already been. He had already and been. he wrote them words out. He's right. still riding them words out right now. So now, you, he on a, now he on the L train. Damn. So you, when you went to trial, 
You were 17, you went to a jury trial? Went into a jury trial with them 12 same and words. You put in 12 in a box. We're going to fight. Hold on, let me, let me interject. This 10 year offer in Waco, Texas. Attempted capital murder on a police officer, and they came with ten. With ten. So that's that low ball. <coughs> yeah, low ball. That's Something got to be wrong. Yeah. That what made me think like, I, I I got him. I got him. Even though I had just had told my my parents, I'm like, man, I'm going to prison. I had told my pop, I'm going to prison. I had talked to this lawyer in Austin, and they told me you beat that case. If you'd have filed a suit on them before they filed a charge on you, you'd have had a civil suit from the jump, mm -hmm. and you have more leverage. You know what I'm saying? But it had got to a point to where. My main money source, a person that would help me in anything. My dad, see, I heard you say on it, y'all hadn't talked to him, talked with him before about how the dad's fall out. I ain't got that story. I tell people all the time. I ain't got the story about the dad, the bad dad. I ain't got that one. So your dad was a good dad? Yeah, still is right now. And was and, there for and you? And he, he wasn't in the house, but he didn't change our relationship at all. So I ain't had that story. I just chose, I'm just proof that you can choose to do wrong or do whatever you want to do and figure out how to do it. Yeah. See, that's and what I, I always. I'm proof of that. That's you know what, what I've saying? always asked a lot of people, and I've all, and now I'm coming to the realization of it that a person can come from a good home, mom, dad, whatever, but they choose to be on the street because the street calling, nothing you can say or do, can you, stop that. You can be strong minded, strong will, and just make a decision at some point in your life. It was wrong going on around me. My parents don't work their whole life. It wasn't them though. Same thing with him. It wasn't them. But like we said earlier about how to how to everything get pushed up onto the streets. Like right now, the culture is to, is to be. I got a thing I say from my from my Islamic faith, from what I done learned about Islam, what I learned about life. I believe that at some point in time, being black was be wrong. That's how it was looked at. That's how we looked at it. Because if you was, they said you was a slave back in the slavery day. If you ran, that was a crime. You're a slave. So that means that to be right, because they was right in the end, they ended up telling them they was right. They did the mass speech program, they say, y'all not really slaves. But for all them years, you told all them people they was wrong for saying they wasn't a slave. So doing wrong became part of our culture. Doing wrong, going against the law. We bucked the law. My mama don't call no police. She don't believe in that. She's 77 years old. She don't call no police. She don't call me, call my brother, call him. We, we, we gonna need you because somebody finna mess up. <laughs> it's gonna be that, you know what I'm saying? They ain't gonna call no police. She ain't gonna do that. She is the police put up at the door right now. They was at the door the other day looking for somebody. She like, join the laws the door. Tell them to go on about his business. And my son, he say, leave. Because they look, they looking for somebody. We just don't call the police. It ain't, it's not, the police was the original clan. We don't call the police. You know what I'm saying? So getting help from those supposed to help you was a wrong in this world with us, with people that look like us. So that's how we came up. And that's just the way it is now. It's the same thing. This is a culture for us. You know what I'm saying? It ain't right. I know that now. When, when you put 12 in the box, I want to get in that courtroom. I'm back in there. You were in there all the time. Mm -hmm. It's the worst thing to go in that courtroom. I don't like it. David no. probably enjoy it now because he's he's a lawyer. <laughs> but I never like going in no damn courtroom. I felt out of place. It don't seem like the scales ain't even even. I know they're going to do something crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't set for that. So, it ain't so, set for you to win. That's right. So uh, so tell me, how was it just that that when they was walking you into, we're about to we're about to do this trial. You better go and take this time. I'm gonna give you one more. You know they're trying to push you to take. They don't want to go in there either because they don't want to spend that money. What but, was it all about? To be truthful with you, by then they didn't want me to take the time. They wanted me out the streets. They was they was literally like they went to my home, my mama have, and told her she just passed away like last year. Say we got the engine out that car. We finna strip it. Man. That's what they told him. We got the engine out the car. We finna strip it now. Meaning him, yep. my homeboy, Willie, TJ, everybody, Floyd, everybody, we gonna get them out. We gonna get them out. Damien, we gonna get them out. We gonna strip the car now. We got the motor. So what did you, what did you when you went in there, you just your first time in the trial? My first time being locked up, period. Ever. I, I ain't been to jail before. This, I went to prison one time. Ain't, ain't, that was my first time going 23 years, the first shot. All the crimes, I only got convicted one time. What did you think when you was gonna try? You thought you was gonna beat it? Yeah, I, I really did. I really thought I could beat it because I know I didn't do what they were accusing me of. That's my mind state. I didn't do this. I didn't try to kill the police. You saying I tried to kill a police officer. I didn't try to kill him. I tried to get away from him. I never even hit the man. And I believe you, but 
just that day you in court, your lawyer, he, he is he even trying? Like he he had he to open good, his statement. He put on a good he put on a good front. I'm gonna show you some things that he did that David and showed me since then. He kept his hands on me, like assuring the jury that I was down with whatever he was saying. But he ain't striking nothing. He ain't really fighting. When David go back and looked at my train, he like, man, he didn't really do no fighting. He just was a good face in there. Mm. He didn't really do no fighting. He didn't, he didn't object to anything. They had me stand up on the stand. He let them, he let the DA put me on the stand for like 10 minutes with the gun in my pants. Huh? I had the gun in my pants. This was, and, and in the end, the DA said, the DA said, he said, you see how comfortable he is with the gun? So he proved, like, he, he packed the gun all the time, which I did, but he proved it to the jurors. Like, he got that big old gun all the time. We talking to tech like this. It's all about visuals. It's all about visuals. So the jury, they got, he told the DA told the jury out the gate, like, that man right there, that ain't who, that ain't him. He pulled a picture of me fresh off leaving the club when they pulled us over one night. My eyes red, her everywhere. You know, it's it, it's one of them pictures. He said, This him right here. This Charles Johnson Jr. right here. That ain't Charles Johnson Jr. because I'm I'm waved up, her low, suit on. That ain't him. This him. So it's all about the visual, like you said. It's all about wow. the visual. So how long did y'all your trial last? Like three days. Three days you was in trial. Yeah. That's quick. They come like back with a with a guilty verdict. And it took them. It, they came back with a guilty verdict fast. It only took them like thirty minutes to an hour to find me guilty. It took them hours, like eight nine hours, to give me my time. They wanted to go home. And come back, and I, told, I said, "Nah, go on running now. Give me what I'm gonna get right now." And the, the, the lawyer like, "You sure?" I said, "Man, tell them to give me what I'm getting right. I ain't letting them go because it was my decision. Oh, to really? Let them go home. It's my decision. Because when they go home, they can call their husbands and mm -hmm. wives, their sisters and brothers, and get information from them. And I want them right here, where they locked in. We locked in. I'm finna be locked up. Go on running right now. We all locked in. And I'm gonna give you. They gave me forty. Right. They, gave you. they made a decision on my life. We found this out. My brother." My brother, he 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 a comedian. He can he can fit in anywhere. He taught me a lot of what I know. He he wiggled his way in in a little conference meeting with the jurors. They thought he was a jury. How? Cause he he looked professional uh. all the time. He just that's how he always looked. He wore boots or some type of dress shoes. He always got a dress shirt on. He always trying to talk up on some on some money. He right. always trying to hustle. He hustle. So he heard it all. He heard them talking about they wanted to give me. They was talking about giving me life. I mean, um, probation. Mm -hmm. And it was three jurors in there wanted to give me life. But you got twelve. Mm, you so it's a whole bunch in the middle that didn't didn't know what to do because I had his um child's mother, my nephew's mom. She was a teacher. She got on the stand and gave an impact statement for me about my school and how smart I was, mm -hmm. how I just got off on the wrong foot, and it was like four teachers on my jury. So they felt that. So they didn't want to send me to prison. They wanted to give me probation. But you had a, a TDCJ officer, a lieutenant on my jury. He wanted to give me life. Mm. He, okay, and he, right. was, he wasn't moving from there. He wasn't budging. He was like, nah, he need life. How did he, he need make life. a jury? How he wasn't struck? Exactly. Boy, my lawyer didn't even strike <laughs> He ain't even strike him. But it, at the time, I don't know this. The, the, it was a couple of slick tricks. Like, they put my mom on the stand, and they used her as a hostile witness. And it, and I didn't understand that at the time, because hostile to me, it only means like she finna be aggressive or aggravated toward me. And she ain't gonna never be like that mm -mm, toward me. They gonna badger her. But he got hostile witness in the court of law. David can, can tell you this. He can verify. It mean they finna put somebody on the stand that's supposed to be for you, but they gonna make it be against right, you. Right, because they gonna badger her. So they put my mom on the stand and made her tell them that she don't know me. Mm. Because they were like, you, you really, you taught them this? And she got up there and said, I taught them to pack that gun. I taught them to sell drugs. I probably would have walked away like, oh, this is mama fault then. Mm. But she got up there and told the truth. I, don't, I ain't teach them that. I ain't never showed them how to sell no drugs. So they told the jury, oh, you don't know your son then. Wow. You don't know him. So you know when, what I'm when you get sentenced to 40 years, how long do you stay in the county before you get shipped off on the chain gang? Not long. I thought I was going to be there. Everybody else was staying there months and a year almost. I was gone like, it wasn't even 45 days. Okay. I was on that bus. Where did you go? What transfer? Did you go to Gurney? Gurney. Gurney. Okay. Six four down there. With the gurn. Yeah. You were you on the Joe F. Gurney unit. With the gurn. What 
that you get off the bus, you on the Joe F. Gurney unit, you already prepped mentally for this, you know you got 40, you not trying to hear it, or, or how was you thinking when they when they took you off of that, that, that bus? I left, for me to know now that um, prison is just modern day slavery, I left like a slave. I ain't had no shoes on, it was raining, I was barefoot. And they get out that bus and they get out of your clothes, get naked. Stand, stand back to back, back, front to back with him, and to do me like that, and now to me know that it's modern day slavery, it's it's pattern straight out to slavery. For me to know some of the slave tales and stuff like that. And my, me seeing my brother, my brother tried to get there, I called him and told him I was on the chain. He had somebody call him when the phones came on. You know, the phones would come on at 7 o'clock, they call you on the chain like 4 in the morning. So I call my brother when the phone come on, tell him I'm on the chain so he can bring me some shoes and stuff. Because I ain't the outfit to leave. I had like $13 on my books, which I kept money, but I had just spent it on commissary. You can't take it with you, though. It stayed behind. So um, for me to see him in the parking lot when we leaving on the bus, and he just had to look at I like, you don't know where you're going, bro. Like, you, I know you don't know where you're going now, because I ain't never been there. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never been there, but I always had this thing that I found out over time. You know, people say they get butterfly. I let mine float me to the situation. Wow. So I let my butterfly take me where I'm going. Cause I'm gonna get them. Everybody get them. Everybody get them when you going somewhere you don't know. But I just let mine take me. They ain't gonna take me back. I'm just going forward. When you get there, you you go through the 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 situation to get in there. Give you your mat. You end up going to a probably a 24 man tank. I yeah. know the game, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you get yeah, yeah, you yeah, get yeah, over yeah. there. Once you get in there, yeah, what you, you knew you got to do 40 years. Did they separate you from everybody? Or did they just put you in the midst of everything? No, they put you in the midst of everybody. I met I met this guy, me and him. We ended up bearing, uh We had a mutual friend named Bobby Clark. He was the only one in the tank from Waco. I had never met him before that. We we all the same age. We went to school. We went to Waco. I went to university. So Waco, this ain't just that small, but we didn't know each other prior to that. He had caught a case. He was locked up for uh, robbing somebody, shooting somebody, something like that. I met him. They put me right on his bunk. They, they um, not on purpose. They didn't know it from Waco. It just was the bunk that was open. I ended up here selling. You know, we in the we, Gurney is a, uh, a a room for the bunks. Full of, yeah, bunks. It's a county, really. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So I ended up here selling. So he gave me the rundown about the tank, them the Crips over there, them Bloods over there. It's a whole bunch of Mexican gangs over here. This, that, another. You know what I'm saying? Cut out and heard about you. So we ain't gonna have no problems. We gonna rock out if we have to. Period. Point blank. Did what year, they what year was that? Work? They who? Check your paperwork. No, that's no, they in the state. state. Oh, they do it in the feed. Yeah, they so, do it in the state. So oh, when okay. you when you end up in there, how long do you stay on the Joe F. Gurney unit before you ship to a convict unit? Oh, I, was, I got there February 2nd, 1998. Never forget the day. I left August the 8th, 1998. Behind a ride that I had nothing to do with. Man, you was there a while. I was there six months. So when you leave, what did they send you to? To a McConnell unit, Beaver, Texas. I was was that a, that a convict unit? That was a, that was that was a. When I a say convict, unit. like a lot of people that's got a lot of time go to yeah. that unit because yeah. you had they forty built, years. They built it for them. When they built McConnell, they shipped the whole shipment of Kofi, people that had been on Kofi and Beto for no. years. They shipped them there. They opened that unit up. Ferguson. They opened McConnell with. It was started in ninety three. That's when they opened it, like nineteen ninety three. So they opened it up with people from big units. So it was, yes, everybody there. Like since I've been out. A string of brothers we even met up and hooked up. They was there from the day it opened, and they just got out when I got out. So they was wow. there 25, 30 years old. 30 years. Had been locked up 10, 15 years before that. You know what I'm saying? Dang. So McConnell, McConnell, a whole year. It a whole year, a whole year unit. When you end up getting, uh, when you on, when you when you end up going there, you 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 still learning how to do time. Yeah, it's fresh. You fresh. You on McConnell unit. You, uh, but you just left a riot that you didn't start. But you was was you in it? No, I wasn't even in it. I wasn't in it at all. I wasn't in the ride at all. It was a game. It was a game uh, ride, and I never, I never got involved with the gangs. You know, when I got locked up, because it wasn't no gangs happening like that in Waco, like it is now. Back then, it wasn't no gangs. Only the Hispanics had gangs. They considered us a gang. They said we was the Southsiders, so they they put that title on us. I had to get in prison and really get around the gang to realize that the definition of a gang, we was doing that though. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the definite, how they got it defined, we was doing that. Three or more people that hang together and, and, they, and they move in a certain fashion together and criminally. We was doing that. That's what the definition is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So we were doing that, but we, our parents was going to bat for us saying, nah, they family. They just grew up together, which was true. We started out playing, saying a lot of football. 
and move to something else. You know what I'm saying? We was getting rocks out the way to play football instead of getting hurt on them. We started throwing rocks at prison. Lay on I, I got to ask you, I was, what was the difference in McConnell unit versus Gurney unit for us? Uh, it was a two man sales or whatever? It was all kids. Like they, on Gurney, even now today, they don't let a convict stay over there. If somebody come back into Gurney that's been in prison before, he gonna get shipped quick because they want to manipulate the youngsters in there. They want to be able to, you know, deal with them how they need to deal with them and, and train them, which, which, which is, this is a segue into something I want to tell you about before we leave, about how the prison system, how the, the reform part of what they say about prison, it's just like saying make America great again to me. It's saying the same it's no way. reform. It's no, it's no reform inside a prison because how can what you what you gonna reform me to? Yeah, but uh, don't they <laughs> don't they have education and stuff that they? Once again, what you gonna reform me to? We was getting educated before we went in there by that system, yeah. and we still went in there. So what you gonna reform me to? You gotta spiritually reform me. You gotta give me some spirit. You gotta give me some. You gotta put me back on the path that could never have we could never have been on from where our people came from. You can't tell me somebody loved me and want me to know God and they was beating it. Chaining me and stringing me up and raping my wife and all—you can't tell me that it ain't the same person. People that love God don't do that, so it can't—it couldn't have came from that. How long was you on McConnell Unit? Fifteen years. Fifteen. So you did the majority of your time on McConnell Unit. Fifteen years on McConnell. What caused you to leave McConnell? Kids, I stayed on McConnell out of year because I was—I called myself um, getting money over there. Well, um, you was getting money over there. Yeah, I was getting it, taking care of my taking care of my children. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get out. I was trying to get out because the main money source that I always had, you got to realize by the time he heard it, because he didn't come, my dad didn't come to the trial. He couldn't take it. He he really saw, he, he's strong as all I know. He can't, he saw when it come to me. So he couldn't, he knew I was finna go down. Kind of like how David bear, couldn't about my partner. He couldn't, he couldn't watch it. So he didn't, he never showed up. He was just getting the information. And once he realized, this boy been doing all the stuff they say he been doing. I you know wanna, what I'm saying? I want to go to David though, like, you end up going into law. Him going through what he went through and what you witnessed drove you to go to law. That night. Why? Well, for a few reasons. First reason is, before it ends, is I guess being naive, I thought in order to get convicted, you had to do something. I sit there and watch my partner go to jail for something he didn't do. Because I know, because I saw him. So they convinced 12 people that something happened that did not happen. Convinced. That's the whole game. Beyond a, beyond a reasonable doubt. They believe something that happened beyond a reasonable doubt that did not happen. At all. So that drove you to where you say, I want to try to be I really was just doing to get him out. Because I'm knowing he got to do a, tw a, a 20 because it's ag. I know it don't take 20 years to get out of law school. And Texas got a law for that. But when you went, you appealed it, right? I appealed it. I appealed it. They gave me another attorney, which is a notable attorney in Waco, Walter Reeves. They gave me a notable attorney again. And he, he, he fought it, but from what I seen on paper, he fought it. If I show him the paper, he'd probably be like, he ain't do nothing. Because he know the law. That's the difference. I'm laming. He a law professional. Two different people. You know what I'm saying? It's two different people. The words that I understand in English, regular world, they the same words they use them in the law field. They mean something totally different. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's a different world. But then they'll tell you, ignorance of the law is not, it ain't, no, ain't no excuse. It ain't no excuse if you don't know, because he learned it, so I can learn it. You know, that's how they look at it. So I appealed it, and it looked good on paper. You know, I was just like any other dude that's in there. I'm finna get out. I'm finna get out. Everybody think that. You know, and some people do, but it's a small percentage because they 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 they, they continue to push the goalposts back. They'll push the goalposts back on you, man. You get right there at the goal line and fourth and one, and they'll move it back. They'll call a holding penalty on you, move you back twenty yards. They do it all the time. How did you, how did you know you was denied? They see they see your paperwork in the mail. They send it to you. It's a long walk from the mail room. Everybody but, get it. But how many lawyers actually defend someone like? You're their brother. Um, very few. You understand like, what I mean? Because like if he defends you, he would defend you like you see what I mean. But exactly. how many lawyers that you just meet? A lot of them is just a really business, just, right? A lot of them is just a business. They they gonna get the money regardless. If they get you plead out, they get they get a, they get a nice amount of money too. If they get you plead out, they get you quarter point. They get money. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's like she like like she said. It's just your brother. 
compared to somebody you really don't know. It's just money, money transaction. Wow. You know, you you get a 40-year stint, but you end up coming home after doing 24 years. 23. 23, 24, 23. I keep saying 20. <laughs> I don't know why I want you to do it. I, I think... I, I don't know. Somebody do 24 years that I've been talking to? Because <laughs> I talk to a lot of folks now. 23. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an even number. <laughs> so 23 years, you you, you get a, uh, what you do? You, you you sitting in there, uh, you you go before parole. How many times did you go before the parole board? I only seen parole twice. They did. I caught more time in prison too. What? Hustling. Yeah, I got jammed. They got you on McComb. Yeah, on McComb. How you they doing? Cause you, you, you was on there. You, you had it set up. I got caught on some more places too though, but they, it got me overcome. They got you. I, I got investigated by the feds in prison. I got caught up in a federal investigation. How? Hustling. It's just being ignorant. Trying to get out. Thinking that was my way out. Not understanding. I did all that and still ended up getting out when they let me go on parole. I had the money. I had the money to get a lawyer. But me being a kind-hearted person I am, I started loaning it out and giving it to family members and this, that, and other. And, you know, it it, it, it just went away. And I, by the time I was getting ready to get it again, I woke up one day and said, nah, you ain't going to do that no more. So you was in there dealing with contraband and all kind of stuff. Yeah. It, 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 it's higher in there. Everything's six <laughs> for one. Because <laughs> it's very, it's very, it happens a lot in prison. Yeah. But... From what a lot of people make it sound like whenever, I don't know if it goes for that as well, but um, like, say, example, you buy something, this gum out here, and you pay $2 out here. In there, it might go for $20. If an if, if a, if a, if a officer want to just sell food in prison, mm -hmm. they can sell a, I gave a lot one time, $50 to bring me a family meal of um, Kentucky Fried Chicken. I gave her $50 to bring it in and the money to pay for it. So she got fifty dollars to walk food in it. Ain't they gonna never stop her? They gonna let her walk the food. They think the laws gonna eat it. They always doing you know something down there. Mm -hmm. They think the laws gonna eat it, so they gonna let her walk it in. It ain't even no contraband. It's okay. It's contraband when I get it. Once mm -hmm. I get it in myself, the law to walk by like, hey man, how you get it? What you doing? That good that's job. Fried chicken in there. Give me a piece. I'm gonna write you up. One and two. You know what I'm saying? So that's 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 the type of movement that can happen. For anybody in there, you know. As you was in there though, when you when you was dealing with this, um, you 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 get you came home finally, but they denied you that first time. How hard was it being denied? You, you were you heard or you expected them to deny, to deny you? I didn't expect it. I wanted to go home by then, but I had changed my life by then, so I could accept it. When I did wasn't you a change? kid anymore. I wasn't a kid anymore. I, I I'm gonna say um. I became Muslim in 1998, so I've been. That's when I first got in there. Yeah. So let me let, 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 let's 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 break that down. Cause you were selling let's, let's break that down. Let's break that down. The Muslim can sell drugs. He just ignorant. He, I was still <laughs> ignorant. See, what I'm saying I didn't have full understanding. I just believed that Muhammad was the messenger of Allah was the only God. I believed that, but that don't mean I was totally equipped to do what I'm doing now. Cause now I'm out here. Where ain't nobody got to walk through no gate to bring no drugs. I ain't touched nothing since I've been out of here. Yeah, but when you was in there, like, you you became a Muslim. I you were doing your surahs, five, five prayers a I day. No, see, that's what we need to stop I'm it. Trying to I wasn't doing none of that for 10 years. I just had accepted the faith. I wasn't doing nothing. My Quran said on my shelf, the only time I really moved it was when I went to get moved. Pack up for shakedown. You know how it go. Shakedown, yeah. you got to pack all your stuff, pack it on your back. All you got in the world, you got to pack it on your back. That's the only time I almost touch that crown. I touch it every now and then. Or somebody say something and I'll go look for it. I wasn't, it wasn't in me. When was the it defining moment when you knew, like, I got to start reading this thing, man. I, I done been to Juma and I done been to Tyleen, but I, I ain't changed. I, tap, I tapped all the way in when um, he ended up representing my son on the case. There it is. I tapped all the way in and I throw the towel. I cried for days. I throw the towel What'd your everybody. son end up? He's like, he finna be messing around. I Damn. told my mom, I said, if he come in here, I ain't leaving the he leave. Mm. Period, point blank. If he come in here, I'm going to get on you the way I ain't leaving the he leave. So How old was your like, son at this time? He was 17. Same did you age. Ever, did superstar, you ever, superstar in high school on his way to college and caught a case one night. Did you blame yourself for same. it? Yeah, still do. I mean, I wasn't there. I, I'm, 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 I'm first line of security. And I wasn't there. My mom and my daddy ended up raising my brother and my family and his uncle. And, you know what I'm saying? My, his cousin, my nephew. How old were like you that. when he left? When how old was he when you left? Uh oh, I caught my case on his first birthday. Wow. 
He was mm. one. When I came back, he was 24. He used to come down there and see you? Yeah, with my mom. When you heard that he, he, how did you hear that he was, he, your son had gotten killed? He told me. My mom didn't even tell me. They, they told him. To know. Didn't tell me. <laughs> they called him. We need help. They called him. But then I'm calling, they ain't tell me nothing. They ain't called me. I got cell phones. They could call me. They ain't called me or nothing. When I called him, he got in touch with my partner. Hey, you know how the David say, man, David say he got something to tell you. So they told, he told, David told them, man, tell them Charles got a case. Cause my son ain't Charles too. <laughs> tell them Charles got a case. Did you, able, were you able to beat it? it he could have beat could, it. Yeah. They like, were scared to let him go to trial. Yeah. The family been. was scared. Right. My mom Cause they went through that with you. Yeah, exactly. Kept him out here though. Kept so him out he can go to prison in that one. That but one. he had to end up folding for, right. for a Knocked case. him out the field for all of them. He was, he was cold. He was cold. Best you were a lawyer at this time. Right. But you weren't his lawyer. Right. Why? No, oh, he was he was young, seventeen yeah, he was, when he. Yeah. But he. No, 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 not his lawyer. I'm talking his son. He was his yeah, son's lawyer. lawyer. Oh, you was his yeah. son. Okay. He was but his the lawyer. State, check this out. The state of Texas got a law. He can't be my lawyer on that case because he was with me. With yeah, you. because he was with you. I I figured That's that. That's crazy to me. But, but the, the the thing <laughs> he is, though, life. He a whole different person. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But you you basically. Your son, you you get. I want to talk about you getting released and how it was coming home after all those years. Cause it I was, know I really had to be a. It had to be a delight to get out of there. It was. It was. I was overjoyed. You no, know, my mom, my dad, and my son. They came. I got a daughter too. You know, she was. She Damn, had just had boy, a baby. How in the hell? My daughter. My daughter had just been born. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I get it now. I'm gonna say, nigga, you started at 13. Dirty nigga, that nigga started at 13. Right in the streets. Right but no, street. like, like, so you had two kids, which that was a blessing. Yeah. I say this, and I'm gonna say that my cousin, he did now to Kevin, but he had a, he was coming up here at 17. I never forget it. He was coming from the country. You remember this? Me mm -hmm. and my wife was had a bright future. He had, he had a bright future, but he was crazy to me. He ended up telling me he want to have a child. He's 17. This do not sound good to me. He telling me, he telling his dad, he telling her, I want to have a baby. I'm going to have a baby. I'm like, what the hell? And his girlfriend, you, boy, you she's 17. smart. Was going to get scholarship to university, all of that. I'm like, you going to mess up your future. He's saying that. I want to have a baby. I'm like, man, you crazy. Not long after that, make a long story short, he working in oil field. On his way from home, they had a wreck. And it, ki it didn't kill him. It made him brain dead. Okay. Mm. He had that baby before he did before that. Before he did that. He ended up being uh, 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 brain dead and in the bed in for the about 10, home. 11 years mm -hmm. in the nursing home. But I always would go back to that when he would drive into my house. It's my first cousin. And I kept telling nigga, man, you crazy, man. But he didn't probably understand why he was saying that. But God no, already had put this inside exactly. of him. Mm -hmm. He'll move you. He movie, it, it be things like he, he don't want nobody to have no illegitimate children, but he already know you doing stuff you got no business anyway. So you you finna knock yourself out the box because I already know. So go on, have these kids because you doing you doing wrong anyway. You you messing around, y'all ain't trying to get married, y'all young. You know what I'm saying? Ain't too young to get married, but y'all ain't trying. So I'm gonna plant these seeds for you because you finna knock yourself out the box down the line because I already see it. You can't see it. If I I tell people all the time it's a joking thing. If you told me, if I knew right now you was going to pass away today, I'd say, hey man, let me, let me wear that ring. You ain't going to get it back. <laughs> you going to be gone. You ain't, who going to come back and for it? Your wife? Hey, you got my husband's ring. And I might give it back to her, but you ain't going to be able to ask for it mm -hmm. if I knew. That's why we don't know those type of things. But what I look at is that the bloodline, the bloodline had to continue. We're not thinking about, it may not even be his son who, Something special is supposed to come through. It could be That's his right. son's son. Something had to happen. You understand what I mean? Exactly. Somebody great gonna come through that line that we don't even know. That's right. Wow. That's right. I just, like I said, I, I, I do want to ask you about when you was released, you know, after doing all those years, 23 years is a long time, man, to not be in society, dealing with those uh, COs all that time. They bust the ink pen, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All these old cases, you got tired. I know you got, getting shook down. They taking everything uh, all the time. Like, what was it? And you knew, you, did you get an FI one or two? I got a, um, I actually got a one when I finally got Oh, you got a one, one. 45 days? Yeah. How, how long did it take them to get look, you? It didn't take, it still took longer than 45 days because they got an they got they extension on it if needed based on unit operations. It, it, too many buses going out and all that old mumbo jumbo that hit you with. But um, it gave me parole, and then I had to go back. 
and see them again on the charge I count the, the eight year charge. I got an eight year charge, and then everybody was like, "Man, you probably won't make pro." Now I'm like, once again, me being a thinker, it don't make sense. They just gave me pro on ten to murder. Why would they not give me pro on weed? That don't even make sense. But some people don't make it. But it, they don't tell you what they did in between. Correct. I didn't do nothing. Nothing. My record was clean for the last six, seven years I was in there. You know what I'm saying? After my, like I said, after my son caught that case, I just, I just laid it down on everything. I, I, I almost jumped back out there because I wanted to get out still. You know what I'm saying? Once I found out he couldn't represent me, well, I gotta get, I gotta get the money. You know what I'm saying? He like, well, I, my dad take care of it. He said, man, you know I got you, but. It's just me being me. Still, mm-hmm. it was kind of a little ignorant. I got to do it for myself. You know what I'm saying? So I almost jumped back out there, but I didn't. I held firm to the rope of law, and I just stayed, you stayed praying, focused. You was praying then. You started start, praying then, I start, then. I got always, I, I ended up on Cofield unit. Oh, you was on Cofield? And Cofield is a, Cofield, if you if you go to the gate and tell the officer, hey, man, I'm trying to go to the chapel, he'll let you out. They want you to go in there. Most units ain't like that. Wow. They don't care if you're Muslim, Jewish, Christian, whatever. You want to go to chapel? Go. Mm. They're going to let you go because they want you to try to correct yourself That's through good. faith. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just, they ain't on no, we're we going to correct you as a prison system. Go in there. That, your brother's in there. There's some more people in there. Go in there because you got a big chapel, state all the equipment in there. You can go in there and watch videos, all type of stuff. So they want you in there. So I got on that unit. That's sure. why I learned. No, that's so. why I learned most of what I know now. As far as, you know, that's why I learned the majority of it. You know, so go ahead. Right, so, um, how long you been out? Since no. um, October second, two thousand nineteen. It'd be four years this year. Four years, and I see you married. Yes. How long you been married? Since the year I got out. The year you got out. Yeah, I made I made a vow to myself when I left for part of my faith that I wasn't gonna uh, fornicate. You know, so um, I laid some ground rules when I got out here. I was staying with my parents. And you know, girls was coming from everywhere mm-hmm. trying to talk to me. And play once I laid the ground rule, once I laid the ground rule, she don't want to stick by the rule. My yeah, wife yeah. don't want to stick by the rule. She like, the ground rule, you got to come over to my parents here. That's the only time I can have. Because I know I ain't nothing going to happen. See what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I know ain't nothing going to happen until, until I'm, because my mama going to be walking. Yeah, yeah, she going to walk yeah. through. She, like, what y'all doing over there? She going to come through. You, you, know? you hadn't been with a woman in a long time. By, well, by a my little choice. bit, but it was it was some guards in there. By my choice, because them That's guards say, by, my choice. by my choice, by my choice, yeah, by my choice. I hadn't been with one the whole time. I walked that whole walk. For Twenty three no years, no. years, no, no woman. No. How woman. hard was that? It wasn't hard for me because I never was on. Um, Wait I'm a minute, twenty three years. I'm just gonna tell you, well, they got. I had a man, phone. Man, come on, listen, bro. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen come on, about bro. Time. Listen, about time. I had a phone. You gotta understand. I had a phone. I got out in 2019. I had a phone for 13 years. So I was talking to people, taking care of myself. I was looking at the phone. Taking, I was able to take care of myself. I wasn't a regular inmate. See what I'm saying? I had a phone for 13 years. Different phone, multiple phones. But Two, they did. But they didn't sometimes. know you had a phone. No. Okay. I mean, they they got snitches in prison. They were mm-hmm. telling it, but I ain't got it when they come. Mm-hmm. I ain't got it. JoJo got it. So you got you 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 got a phone. You communicating with the outside world. Communicating, do- meeting people. But but the only thing it was, you just come it's on. One man. It's one thing years, I know. It's one thing I know. It's one thing I know. Watch can't go watch twenty three minutes. Okay. Okay. Watch. <laughs> 23 days. We've been going, we've been going long. 20 minutes. Now I got to go home after this. <laughs> watch, this. watch this, watch this, watch this. Before you ever, before you ever crossed that line, you didn't know how it felt. Once you crossed that line, that's when it became a problem. Okay, what's the deal? So like, once I was in that county jail, once I was in that county jail, 18 months, 18 months was long enough to me down there forget. That's it's a, a mind time. over matter thing. 18 months, ain't no action, no county jail. Yeah, but they got them guards come through there, man. Them now, little tight pants, man. Not back man. then. That's what I'm saying. It's the same. So, you so, over there so, 22 so years. This. So watch this. I got used yeah, to that. It's walk by in 22 watch years. This. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm going to give you give two reasons why, why it knocked me out the box. <laughs> because the same woman that you trying to talk to in there, she talking to a dude down the hallway. Uh-huh. She don't know when she go home, though. He talking to a man, though. So mm. I ain't going to take them chances. You can ask him. I always been scared of the thing I can't see. Yeah, that's if I can't see it, I can't see diseases. I'm scared of them. See what I'm saying? Do you see that a lot in prison? Huh? Do you see that a lot in prison? What? <laughs> it's like a, a man. What Weston said on his song? What Weston said on his song? Dude kissing a man, then you see him in visitation kissing his kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it go down like that. It happened like that. And then so, go home and, and she and don't I even know. I hold a badge of honor. Because some of the dudes don't be having no time they fall victim like that. 
I was in there 23 years. I ain't fall victim to, to no no scallywag women. None of that. I ain't fall victim to none of that. None of the, none of the other under the table stuff. I didn't fall victim to none of that. Ain't ain't nobody can walk nowhere like dead or alive and say, well, yeah, he no. It, it wasn't even in me. So Facebook comes out while you in there. I'm on it. <laughs> I'm on it. Instagram comes out while you in there. Instagram. I had I laid the phone down by the time Instagram came. I got off of it. But you looking at Facebook like, yeah, nigga, it's up. It's Man, up. I, I see here. Behind <laughs> nah. <laughs> yeah. But you used to it. It wasn't like strange to you when you came out because I didn't you already knew that they had a person that could go on that phone and get stuff out of it that you thought you erased. Mm-hmm. See, yeah. that TDCJ will pay that person. It's an accountant. They'll go pull the number. You got to. You can't mix it up where they can't find it. You can to a stem. They gonna go in there and get it. And once they go in there and get it, you on there like this. You out of there. <laughs> you sending pictures. Yeah, sending pictures. <laughs> send them to my nephew. No, send them to everybody. You send thought you was in the free world. I was. You were riding in his mind. He riding, nigga. I'm I riding. Was. I, nigga. I used to, I'm telling you something that people are amazed by. Shoes cost forty nine dollars in there. I used to tell people I got fifteen hundred forty nine dollars shoes. I kept fifteen hundred dollars in my shoes in prison. The whole time. Kept it in there. For well, years. on, on, on McCon- Mar- For McCon- years. For years, I did. Fifteen hundred. That was my cap. That was my claim to fame. In there. Hmm. They knew you. You had it on you too. Yeah. The guy. My in crowd. My Some guy, of the in crowd. My guy. I, 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 I pick people well. You gotta realize we ran with like ten people. None of them told on me. They could have buried me. Wow. Literally. That's why we like we is now. Cause I know he could have buried me. See what I'm saying? But. <laughs> When you and come when you get out, you come home, you 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 they probably brought you to Hutchins or something. Now he 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 uh, when I yeah, I love from Hutchins, you're right. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, I love from Hutchins. I love from Hutchins, yeah. I love from Hutchins. That's my mom okay, got me from Hutchins, yeah. Hutchins. So when you get to Hutchins, what what did you what did you you was like, man, I'm That was the out. longest time. You was them like I'm three out, bro. Them three days I was like, man, it's and they ain't time to get up. They ain't go to sleep. I'm waiting on them three days. I was there three days. What did you, what was the first thing you did when you came home? Um, they picked me up. I'm talking about what you wanted to do. I know everybody had been there. I really, couldn't do, I really couldn't do too much. You had the monotone? I had five parole officers. Five? Yeah, the parole officers for the state, my mama, my daddy, my brother. I had five <laughs> parole officers. I couldn't do nothing. So did you go out to eat? Do you remember? Did it, was it anything? I had that pr- pro told my mom. Once they told my mama that, if they had told somebody, I might get some leeway. They told mama he need to go straight home. That's what I did. You went straight home. It wasn't no moving. She said, "I ain't losing you like that again. We're going straight home. We went straight home. Everybody came there. He came. TJ came. My nephew came. My brother was there. Everybody came to my house for 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 months. Everybody came to my How house. How did you feel for everybody to show you that love and come out and just support you like that? It felt good, you know. I, the old me would have been like, I I earned it, but it didn't mm-hmm. feel good. You know, I know, I know. You know, you learn. You growing up, you think this family and that's it. Life taught me that it's more than bloodline, though. You know what I'm saying? Like down the line, we all kin. That's what they say. I believe that because I believe in Adam and Eve. So down the line, we all kin. But I know. Outside of that, that is family outside of blood, direct bloodline. You know what I'm saying? I've I witnessed that. My my brother was telling um uh, my uh, daddy and them like y'all for the see because the whole time my brother was telling my mama know y'all don't believe Junior who he is and they like he ain't do all that stuff. He said, he said y'all for the see when he get out. Watch how they gonna show up. And they were coming through with them bad. But they like, why they bring you all that stuff? You gonna have to sell some drugs or some kids or somebody <laughs> to show that stuff. They I say no. Nah. They just love They just you. bringing it. Just bringing it. I told my dad, I said they would have bought me a car if I didn't tell them not to. Well, we rolled I told for them the twenty three. It wasn't ever no disconnect. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Me. So how was it for you being out here and he in there? It was tough sometimes because yeah. you missed him. Absolutely, and I know that he and there for something he can do. Yeah, that messed with you. And your hands tied. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And That's your guy. Money couldn't fix it. Yeah, it wasn't no, wasn't no buying out. It's crazy. And did you try? Sorry. Go ahead. Did you, and did you, since he had kids while he was gone, did you ever feel like, well, I got to step in to try that's to? A, that's that's overstood. But like like he said, he got a, his his family, you know what I'm saying? His mom and like. His mom and dad. Be straight. But at the end of the day, that's that wasn't even a question. Mm. And. <laughs> His, they know that. That's a good friend, man. I, when we we interviewed Ice T uh, the the other day, and uh, 
his friend Spike. They wrote a book. Did y'all y'all heard I've that heard book? Of it. I heard it. And I heard it. It was called Split Decision. So it was almost mm-hmm. the same situation. It was, it was kind of like they was running together. They went different. And then they ended up. He ended up getting into entertainment and stuff. And Spike ended up doing time. How much time? Was it 24 years? <laughs> Probably 24. I don't remember. Spike did the 24. Let him do that 24. I ain't doing no more. Spike. I ain't doing no more. I got I got another book coming out. I ain't doing no more. That's what it was. I'm pretty sure it was. Spike did the 24. Let him do that 24. I ain't doing no more. I ain't doing no more. I got another book coming out. I ain't doing no more. That's what it was. I'm pretty sure it was. So anyway. Spike did 24 years, and then you basically they 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 call the book split decision. Will you guys ever do a book, anything on y'all's on everything that happened? You have a documentary. We're gonna do a lot. I'm gonna do a documentary because my my whole life changed. You know, at one point in time, I had made my mind up. I met so many different people in here. You gotta understand, I had a dude that used to pay me two hundred dollars for moving my phone for like ten minutes. So you can imagine who he was calling. Mm. You can imagine who he was calling. I gave him his own SIM card. It's your SIM card because I don't know what you're doing, but. I met so many people and I could have came out here and been way worse than what I was when I went in. So for me to, I had made my mind up. I thought I'm so much different to me than the rest of my family, how I think. I just thought that I was just cursed or something. I had got to that point. You know, you got to realize the 23, if I want to think of the 23 years, it did kind of get to me at times because I started thinking that I actually shot the law. I started believing it like I had to. Like how I end up in there, something I had to miss. Me and David missed something. Cause I just couldn't believe that they had, that me of all people had been railroaded like that. And when they say I did something I totally didn't do. So I started believing I did it for a mm. period of time. I was like, I had to did it, man. But then me knowing me, like he was saying earlier, I got out of that artillery, it wouldn't have been like that. So I know I didn't do it. That's what I had to, I had to reason with that. Like that ain't charged like, like, one bullet, no clip in the gun. You wasn't trying to do nothing to him. I had to reason out like that because I had got to a point where I believed that I did. But at the end of the day, you know, it's just, I got the documentary I'm gonna do. I've been supposed to been trying to do like podcasts and stuff like this. Like people like, well, as soon as you said that about to David, but I got to interview him, my son was like, you gonna do it? Because they feel like I, I'm not, like I don't want nobody to know. But I know that, that in life, my story is gonna change somebody. It can That's the somebody. whole game that. of boss talk. It's gonna change somebody. Is that people can see your story, yeah, and see his story, and pretty much they can gain something from it. People who might young people might be going through something similar. That's right. So we always gotta take the opportunity to tell our story That's because right. it helps other people. How did were you proud to see David pursuing law like that? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I'm one of the ones that encouraged him to go ahead and take. You know what I'm saying? His job with um, Craig Walker when he first started out, he was like, man, we from the streets. I can't do that. i like, bro, <laughs> it's some child molesters. Somebody need to go down. Yeah. You can convict somebody. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. That's an opportunity for you to actually get some money because he really supposed to be in the NBA. Really? He cold. You were that he bad. Literally. I ain't, I watched basketball. You know how Tupac was on Bud and Rim? Yeah. I, I used you to be people ball. like that. I used you, to had a like razor, that. you had a blade in your tongue. Yeah, tell yeah. me. <laughs> no. Tell me. With a Dallas Cowboy starter pullover on. Watching the game, making sure so he right there with you. Down. Watching them. They bad. He don't have a couple of they bad with that ball. Wow. They bad. They could have, they supposed That's to make cold, it. Man. Just got caught up doing other things. And he, just, he just proved that you can find something else to do. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm trying to get my son to understand. Like, you can find something else to do. You 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 you're a child of Adam. You can find some as do you can do anything. Let me ask you a question. I'll ask okay. both of y'all a question. Um, because we know that the justice system is lacking in a lot of different ways, and um, a lot of people go in and so keep coming out and going back in and so forth. Or some people come out, can't find a job, mentally distraught, all sorts of stuff. How can we get this right where people are not falling in the system and keep going right back? What can we do for these people who are trying to come out? You got a lot of people that's out here with movements for uh, reform or to help mm-hmm. people change the alter what's to happen in the past. You got to start first with the ones before they even get in there. You know, you got to you got to start grassroots, kind of like how they start with football and basketball. They they push the football and basketball big time now in these neighborhoods, and they make money off of it. And and, and once the kid get to a certain age, you kind of you you kind of let them. You kind of let them let them go a little bit because they get a little older, you know. But you got to stick with them. You got to have different levels where you're gonna stick with them. Now, for those that's already in prison that's coming out, like I mm-hmm. did, one of my one of my plans. And I don't mind exposing my plans because 
I did it the same way I did when I hustled. I know it's enough money out here for everybody. You know what okay. I'm saying? Ain't no such thing as only for me or only for you. But um, one of the things that happened when I was on my way out, they make it now where you have to take a, 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 a trade. But the trade ain't no good once I got out here. Mm. It's only good if David helped me start a business. And I say him because I know he's an entrepreneur like that. Or if I go out like I did with my cleaning business, start doing it for myself. So I knew the cleaning business was the lowest form of money that I would have to use. And I want to do it myself. So I started it. It's been no more than $300 and started it. And it's been running ever since, three years now. But Congratulations. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. But um, but um, but the trades, I had an HVAC trade. I applied for jobs once I got out here. And every time I, I finally realized every job was asking for a test that they don't give you in TDCJ. Mm. But they're getting paid for you to take the trade. It's a game. But the state jail, where the majority of the Caucasian offenders go, they get a trade, they get a test over there. Mm. For the same trade, though. But they don't get a trade to the, the hard, quote unquote, hardcore prisoners. The ones that get out of town, they don't give you that trade. But we the ones that's really fun, funneling the, the, the pipe. Because we gotta take the trade to get out. So everybody taking these trades, HVAC, plumbing, uh, 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 all type of stuff, auto, auto mechanic, diesel mechanic. But when they get out here, they can't get a job unless they get it from somebody that understand. So I want to start a system that's gonna understand that, you know, Ooh. and gonna fund them where we can we can get you on the job. Where you get job, then we can start a business for you. Because every man, once upon a time, every man knew how to fish and knew how to farm. Now they don't know how to fish and farm no more. You work for somebody. Mm. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So now it ain't no, it ain't no um, no no staying out the way. Because you feel like you gotta get in the way. You know what I'm saying? That's the only way you really get some money. You get out here, you see these dudes wearing all this stuff. You know, I, I didn't have that problem. I didn't have that problem. The stuff I got on now, I got stuff like this that I just not to the tech. This is brand new, but I got stuff like this I just took the tech off that he bought me when I first got out. Wow. And my other friends bought me. I had stuff for days, for years. Not days, for years that they bought me. So I didn't have the problem that most guys have when they get out. They don't have nothing. I had support, you know what I'm saying? I had support, and it took for me to be in there with people that didn't have no support to finally realize. I had said that used to want to read my letter from my mom because his mom wouldn't write him. Wow, I you want to ask saying? you how how big was it for you when 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 he came home? It was huge. Like I was saying, I, uh, even whatever college I was at, I would drop a line. He he got all the the um, addresses to every dorm mine lived in. It's, it was one point in time where I had to get the mail sent to the coach. Cause we couldn't get mail directly. He was like, hey, yeah, your boy, your boy wrote you. Wow. He hit him and I got another partner in jail, uh, Mookie. Mookie. I was locked up in he California. Was bad basketball too. They would write me, vice versa. When I made the Dean's List in college, I sent him the thing. Send it to me. Wow. I still got it. Did you, I was about to say, did you save all of those? Send it to me. The letters too, I did you save the letters? Yeah, I still got it in my garage. I told my mom, I said, David sent me his Dean's List. He said, Why did you send he it to him? He sent it to his mom, I said, he sent it to me. I told her. <laughs> but why did you send it to him? Just wanted to let him know. Damn, we lock, I'm, I'm working. It's yeah. taking a little time. I'm locked in. You want him to know you was you had him on your mind. Yeah. Bet. You know what I'm saying? Because it's we got promises that from a juvenile. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And so just went like some type of crazy way. He ended up getting locked up with the dude who smoked our partner that we when we got locked up. That my um, partner that was dead. He got locked up with the dude who killed him some weird, crazy type of way. Twice. Mm. First time I knew it was him. Yeah, I was on the same I would unit? never came back. I would never came back if I knew it was him the first time. Because mm. because you knew how, what type of person you were. Yeah. The second time when I ran into him, I was praying five times a day. He was on had your marks, sword. So I had marks mm. on my forehead, marks on my, you know what I'm saying? He was praying God all the time. knew that you could deal with it at that he time. He had forgot me, though. He never knew me anyway. But the first time I bumped into him, I talked to him. I bumped into him three times actually. I bumped into him on a chain bus when we couldn't have got to each other. The first you knew time, that was him on the chain bus? I knew that was him because his, his sister, our, our, our partner's sister, who passed away too, got killed too, she had told me everything about So him. he killed her too? No, he just killed the, the brother. The brother. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I run a partner who we with all the time, who actually is my cousin by, by blood also. So he ends up on that chain game with you? And I'm on the gurney unit? Nah, we this this when I was on um Gordon McClub. I was on Cofield by the end, and we went on the chain together. He was on another unit. He was in said because he was running for people. He was talking people to trying him? to get him. Yeah, I talked to him. He was just answering questions like he knew me about that. He didn't like know. he just told me like he just because he didn't he didn't ask for forgiveness. And he didn't how my mama forgave him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he was just like I was like, man, you killed somebody. He was like, yeah, man, dropped his head. He didn't. He was hurt. And I'm like, why you do it? He's like, 
Man, I tripped down. Like for me, to, for, if somebody's asked you, you kill. You're somebody, doing this to pick at him to see what the heck he. Yeah, I'm on one side of the gate. He on the other side of the gate. And like I tell you about Tyson, I don't know karate, so I couldn't do nothing to him anyway. But you <laughs> shut him down. No, what, did, what did you what what did, what did but, you feel when he told you that? It, I'm mad still, then because he because this your cousin. I was yeah, I wasn't deemed up then like I am now. I wasn't nowhere near that. I was still I went right back to that unit and got back to hustling and was you know what I'm saying doing stuff I wouldn't have no business doing. But I'm talking to him and he looking at me and dropping his head like man I ain't like I ain't mean to no I didn't want to in other words you know what I'm saying. The first time I ran into him, I didn't know who he was. I was on the record with him all the time. Cause now when I'm looking, I'm like, man, I know you. You know what I'm saying? I was around you back then. When I first got on Gurney. When I was how, how many on years McCunk, that passed when by? I first got on McCunk, huh? like ten years. And you seen him again. Seen him again. Then the unit I made parole on, I seen him there. And I remember I told my mama, I say, uh, that dude over here, I'm on the phone with her and my daddy. And my daddy said, What if we get you moved? My mama said, you ain't got to. He ain't the same person no more. He ain't the same person. He ain't the same person. So you didn't even talk to him no more. My mama told him if he was going to do something to him, he wouldn't even tell us. That's right. <laughs> he wouldn't even tell so us. So when we, you, you ever talked to him, he didn't ever know that that was your he cousin? Still, I didn't even say nothing to him the third time. You just let, just let it I know. didn't let it alone because I learned. And his mom would teach us that if I would have did something to him, I would have sent myself to hell anyway because his mama forgave him. Yeah, my, his mama See what I'm saying? Because once upon a time, it wasn't no court system. It was blood time. You could, somebody did something to your family member. You could get them. You could kill them because they killed your family member. You could ask the judge that it was a court system, but they didn't. They didn't do like Texas or the state, United States. Mm -hmm. Or you could actually say, "I just forgive them and give me some sheep, or give me some cows." It's blood money. You know what I'm saying? That's out the door. Not the blood money in the court system by locking you up. Wow, mm -hmm. man, I sure appreciate you guys, man. Um, so. I know, David, you, you're you definitely going to be back on the show. Absolutely. I'll be trying to educate our people on, you know, different law terminologies, trying to figure out how to help our people. So David's going to be coming back. We've already made agreement periodically to speak to him. And you definitely can come back. If we can tell prison stories, because I love doing it, to be honest with you. We ain't tackled <laughs> some of the riots, some of the stuff. Yeah, I know yeah, already yeah, there's some yeah. stuff that happened with you. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, you might have seen anything uh, of Woman get pregnant by an uh, inmate. You've seen that for sure. Even though you wasn't messing with him for 24 years. 23 years. years. Somebody was messing with him. That's a lie we told. <laughs> so, you know, you've seen some things, you know. And just for people to see and hear those stories, like I said, again, it inspires some to stay away from that lifestyle, not want to face it. That's helping. Or some people that's coming home after 20 years. You, you can inspire them to know that it's okay. You can make it out here after you come home. You've started businesses. That's what I'm you, 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 you know what I mean? These people need to know and see that. Would you be willing to talk to prisoners again? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to all that. See, they, I was, I've, I've been back in the prison before. You went back and talked went to them? Went through the front door. That's good. Kofi, I went to Kofi, and uh, I was trying to go to Huge Unit this past Ramadan, but they said I, I couldn't come in there. They said I got some enemy over there. Okay. I'm like, I've been out four years. We we ain't enemies no more because I definitely ain't going to go in there and do nothing to him. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm, I'm going there and going to lock me up now. I'm in there. That's crazy. But, but, but the the, you know, they, they got to protect them. Whoever it is, I don't even know who it is. It ain't nobody that I know I had no problem when I was out here. It's probably somebody that put some paperwork in this to get off a unit. But the you fact know? that you want to go back in the show and help people and tell your story and help them mm -hmm. to understand what they can do when they get out here, amazing, brother. Yeah, when I went to Kofi, they were crying. Mm. Damn, you helped them. They wanted they to have you home. They want to see they can do better. You know what I'm saying? To be, be, to be able to tell them how things is out here mm -hmm. and for them to see. Like, they see, like, they, they expect me to do good out here. A lot of them. Because they like, you did good in here. You know, that's where my spiritual growth was at Cofield. So they, they don't know the guy from McConnell on Cofield. Correct. Really. They don't know. Even though I got in trouble over there and got shipped out Cofield. But it wasn't, it wasn't me. It was me helping somebody. But they know, they know, they know. The one that get up and give coupons, get up and talk. Yeah. So they expect me to grow, and I, I'm out here. I, I I do. I bought that out here with me. You know. Wow. I I I I, I do the sermons at service and so stuff you like that. So you you out Islam? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. All day long, and um, you know, it's I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna get more in tune. You know, I got my my business and stuff going, and you know, I gotta get over that hump, and then I'm gonna get straight to that. That's because that's where I really want to be. That's what I really want to do. I want to help out and uh, help that that funding system back out into society because Texas TDCJ don't do it. 
No, yeah, they don't. No, I, and I get it. I get it. They don't. That's they good don't. stuff, man. Say, so, man, thank you guys, man. We love you, brothers, man. Appreciate y'all for coming on the show, man. Appreciate you made it, man. I, I'm glad to, glad to have you because I, I didn't know if Dave was going to get you over here or not. I said, <laughs> Dave and them be too busy. They got stuff going on. And then on the weekend, him and Mr. Lee hanging out. So yeah, 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 they don't yeah, got yeah. time for the yeah. you know, ball stop. Yeah, 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 they got, Lee. yeah. Yeah, Lee and them, they over there I'm with theirs. Yeah, I'm cool yeah, with it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, man, I just want to say to meet some great guys like you guys and to know that, man, after you go through the fire, man, as gold, you come out repurified the way you guys have. Right. Man, God made y'all just stronger, man. And the bond and the friendship that I see here and witness, man, I thank God for letting me be a part of it, man. Yeah. So I appreciate, appreciate you, you, brothers, man. Appreciate you, man. Bro. What appreciate you think you. about this old I interview? I love it. We over here interviewing today, mm -hmm. huh? Well, I tell you, hell, I'm pretty good at it now. <laughs> I got pretty good at it, man. David, hell, I might stand on the stand and say a few things if you need me up there. <laughs> Just get me in that street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Say, man, listen, man. It's we been another great witness. segment, man. A boss talk, what a boss is talk. And we out.